Hi everyone, and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 91 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, a big, giant welcome back. Today is a foggy and cold and kind of rainy Monday in February here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. I have got show notes available for this episode in the description box below. You will find links to hopefully everything I talk about in today's podcast. So check that out if there's anything you're interested in that I'm talking about or if I miss something, feel free to ask. I'm happy to um, direct or fix if I miss anything. Okay, moving on. We have some announcements, kind of. We're running a make-along right now, and I have a correction to that make-along. It is the Festimal. This is a make-along where you can participate by using up stash that you have purchased at festivals or like yarn or fiber or fabric events or anything like that, or making something that you plan on wearing to or using at one of these types of events. Uh, and also, I would like to go ahead and include things that are inspired by events because I know not everybody has access to these events and not everybody can go to these events. So uh, somebody really awesomely suggested in the comments that we include people who are inspired by like recap episodes of other people going to fiber events. So yes, thank you, yes. If you feel inspired by a festival, but you can't actually go, that's totally fine. Make along with us. Um, but the revision that I wanted to uh, tell you about is that we're changing the hashtag on Instagram, and I'm so sorry. I, a bad, unprofessional podcaster, I didn't actually check the hashtag before I told you about it. So apparently hashtag Festimal is like, already a thing and I think the festival is must be like a music festival or something because it's already a hashtag and it's currently in use so like your Instagram stuff for the make along you're totally getting lost in like I don't know music festival setup or something I'm not really sure <laughs> but I am so sorry we are changing the Instagram hashtag so that it is just us so that you can if you want follow it and not get um, bombarded with stuff that you're like what is this so now we are using hashtag Festimal2020. I checked and that one is not in use. So we're using it, that's our new hashtag. So if you feel like going back and changing your hashtags, if you have put stuff up on Instagram, that's great, do it because those will be um, entries for prizes later when we draw prizes for the Festimal. But if you don't feel like it, that's fine too. And I uh, will be drawing prizes whenever the festival ends, which I have put in the description box below because I forgot. <laughs> I said it last episode, but I can't remember now how long it runs. Uh, but I will be drawing prizes from the FO thread on Ravelry, which also there's a chatter and a note FO thread in the Ravelry group that you should check out if you're interested. I'm also gonna be drawing prizes from the hashtag Festimal2020 on Instagram. And I'm going to be picking up prizes when I go to Stitches West this weekend because I am going to Stitches West. I'm driving down and I'm staying two nights in Santa Clara and I'm going to be going to the Stitches West event at the Santa Clara Convention Center all day on Saturday. So my plan is to pick up some prizes at Stitches West for the festival make-along. So I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited about that. Uh, so moving on to stitches. I will be going to stitches. If you are going, I would love to hear about it. Uh, if you see me at stitches, please come and say hello. I um, would love to meet you. I'm so excited about the idea of meeting and hanging out with and knitting with and hugging all of uh, the people that I can because I'm going to be there by myself. So I need some um, people to, you know, hang out with. Um, I do plan on trying to make it to the Girls in the Yarn Cafe, which is a knitting podcast on YouTube if you haven't checked them out. Uh, they are doing like a meetup at the lounge, which I think I know where that is. I think it's at 2 or maybe it's at noon. It's at noon on Saturday. 
And I plan to go to that so that I can like, I don't know, go and meet them and like sit and knit for a little while. So if you're interested in checking that out, I um, will be there 99% unless I can't find it, which is what happened last year. Um, I was also thinking about kind of like setting up another time for me to go and like sit somewhere and knit for a little while so that if anybody wants to hang out and knit together, we can do that. Uh, I don't know yet though. And I guess this is the last episode until the Stitches event itself. So that's kind of bunk that I say that and I don't actually have a plan. But if I come up with a plan later, I'll put it down here. And if not, and I come up with a plan at the last minute, I will put it on Instagram. So. If you want to uh, follow that, I'm Dynamite Tree on Instagram. Sorry, I'm the worst. <laughs> okay, so that's it about stitches. Um, thank you so much from the bottom of my dark little heart for everybody who was so kind and supportive and generous of me opening a Patreon account. So I opened a Patreon account a couple weeks ago and um, uh, offering like patronage at different levels to enter into giveaways and to pretty much get yarn. And I had so much support over there and love and you guys are awesome and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you at all for watching at all. Um, but I'm also grateful for everybody who decided to go support me over there. I was really blown away by um, how awesome everyone acted, how nice everyone was and how supportive everyone was. And uh, thank you, thank you from seriously deep down in here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's a link below to that if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, if not, that is totally okay too. Okay, moving on to, is that it? To FOs, because I have some FOs. Y'all, I have some FOs. I'm wearing one of them. This is my nurtured pullover. It is done and I'm so excited about it. It turned out so great. I am absolutely in love with it. I love it. So the Nurtured is a pullover pattern by Andrea Mowry. I knit it in this yarn, which is Dream and Color Classy. And this is um, the Chocolate Night colorway. Now this is some yarn that I had previously ripped out from a different sweater and it, in its ripped out state, state sat in my stash for a really long time. So I'm really excited to have actually finally used it. Uh, and I had originally five skeins of this yarn. This is the one skein that I never ever broke into. Um, so this is an original skein. And then this is what I had left over from all of the frog yarn. So overall, I still have a lot of yarn left. Uh, this is almost 200 grams. I think it was like 180 grams or something like that. So now I still have this in my stash. I'll figure out what to do with that. Um, but anyway, this yarn is really beautiful and I love it. It's a worsted weight, super wash wool. And here's the sweater. Ta-da! <laughs> so, um, okay, there it is. <laughs> so it's brown. Um, it's, my lighting's a little whatever, whatever. But anyway, uh, it is, it was a bottom-up pullover, uh, which I don't love. I like top-down. Anyway, it worked out great, though, with the length. Uh, I added, I want to say, like, a half an inch to the pattern and it definitely grew with blocking which I'm really happy about I'm really really happy with the length of it um, I did go down a needle size on the ribbing from what was called for and I also cast on like four fewer stitches for the ribbing and then increased once I got to the body to make the pattern its normal numbers um, to try to bring in the ribbing just a little bit, and I don't know how much it actually did, but I'm really happy with it in general. So here's the tour. It's a raglan, so bottom-up raglan. So I did the sleeves from the bottom-up as well. I think I added about also maybe a half an inch to the sleeves. I think I could have even added another half an inch or maybe even inch to make them longer, but I'm happy with them. And that's the sweater. I love it. I love it. It's very comfortable and I'm into the style of it. So 
I'm super happy with it. I'm very surprised at how little yarn it took. Uh, I thought, I was hoping to be able to use up like all of this yarn that I had in my stash, but that's okay. You know, what are you gonna do? But it was a really fun pattern to work on. It's an all over texture stitch, and this is the texture stitch here. Uh, so it's essentially a patterned garter, or it's like, okay, it's like a slip stitch garter. Um, and it's a four row repeat. It's very easy to memorize. I didn't have to like actually keep track of my rows and cause I could see where I was. It was the kind of thing where like the first and third rounds were knit. And then the second and fourth rounds were the pattern rounds. And it was all just like off by one stitch. So I was always able to tell where I was. So I didn't even need to keep, tra there was, there were no row counters involved in this sweater, which I love. <laughs> She did include some short row shaping um, to raise the back up, which I really enjoyed. I did mess up on that though. And I looked through the projects on Ravelry and apparently a lot of people messed up on that. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people apparently misread the first row of directions. I, what happened to me, I misread the second row of directions, which was, I think the actual first wrap and turn round. And it wasn't like, the pattern's written really clearly. It's just one of those lines where it's like, uh, do this to this marker, do this, do this to this marker, do this, do this to this marker, do this. And I got to more markers than I needed to. So what I have ended up doing is I, I got to like a few rounds into the short row shaping and was just like, this is not right. Something is like really not right here. And I don't know what it is, but something's not right. So I ripped back to the very beginning of the short rows. And then once I got to that row where I could tell that's where I messed up, I actually, every time I like slipped a marker, I crossed it off in pencil because I actually had this pattern like as a little booklet pattern. So I actually like crossed it off as I like went through the row or the round and then I was back on track. But that was a little bit of a bummer because that was a lot of, you know, wasted knitting time or whatever. But uh, I'm glad I got it right because it's great. I love short row shaping and what it does for the neckline. Uh, otherwise, I might be dealing with like this kind of issue where I'm like, Ugh. but it's great. It fits really good. It feels really good on. I knit the smallest size and the smallest size has a two inches, maybe three inches of positive ease built into it for what my actual measurements are. Um, but I feel like it fits with zero ease, which I'm super happy about because I kind of would way, way rather have that. Uh, so, I mean, it just fits really well too on the underarms and like the raglan is perfect for my depth here and it just fits really great and I really love it. So if uh, you're interested in this pattern, I say check it out, it's awesome. And set it. Is that it about the sweater? I like it, I like it a lot. I'm excited about it. Uh, okay, that's it. Moving on to my next finished object. I have another finished object. I have two finished objects this week and it is my three color cashmere cowl. And this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and it's done. I knit it using Knit Picks knit pick Gloss, which is a wool and silk yarn. And the three colorways I used were, this light brown is dough, dark brown is timber, and then this, um, what you call it, coral color? Is that coral? Coral color, it's coral. This is called guava. <laughs> um, so I did switch up the pattern a tiny bit. Um, I left out a little bit of uh, length to it, so, I took out maybe one or two of these rows and then I made this section a teeny tiny bit shorter just cause I was sick of working on it. And then uh, by the time I got to these last stripes, these stripes are supposed to be done in this color, which is color A. I ran out of yarn. Um, so I had to actually end, I had to switch yarns like around early because I completely ran out of that yarn just a little bit early. And uh, so I switched to the coral color instead. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, so uh, I 
had one skein of each of these yarns and these yarns come in 50 gram skeins. The pattern does, I think, call for 50 grams of colors B and C, but like 60 grams of color A. So I, I'm sure I knew when I started this thing that I was gonna run out of that yarn. So no biggie, I think it looks really good how it is. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and put it on so you can see what this puppy looks like in action. It is one of these really super deep, lengthy cowls, which um, is my first time making one of these. I've made quite a few cowls in my time, but they've all been like, you know, that kind of big. <laughs> and um, I really like how this fits. I was kind of been kind of skeptical of this style of a really long cowl for a long time, just because it, it feels weird. But I mean, it pretty much just scrunches up really nicely and makes you have a lot of fabric for, I don't know, warmthage. <laughs> and I really like how it came out. I think it's really cool. And uh, this is gonna be a gift for a coworker. Her birthday is this month. So I'm gonna be giving this to her in the next couple weeks. And I am really happy I got it then. I cast this cowl on, I think it was 2017. I think that's what I figured out. You can see the line. That's the beginning of the round where you switch yarns or where you yeah, switch yarns back and forth. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah, so I have been working on this thing for a really long time. I think I probably got about here in the original knitting of it and then put it down for a couple years or maybe, I don't know, whatever, a couple years. And then I did from here to the end in the last few weeks. And it's a really fun pattern to work on because you're always switching up what you're doing. And Everything's really simple and it's all just in the round. The most complex part that you actually have to pay attention to was the lace bit, of course, but it's really easy lace, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I um, surprisingly and thankfully didn't mess up the lace at all. <laughs> I typically use stitch markers in between lace repeats, but since this was such a short lace section, I didn't do that because it just seemed like too much trouble. And uh, I totally didn't mess up. Boom, in your face, lace knitting, in your face. So I'm super happy with it. Um, I do have some yarn left over of colors B and C. So there's that. <laughs> um, but they're really pretty colors and the yarn feels really great. It's a really nice, soft um, fabric. And I don't typically really love silk, so yeah, I like it though. Feels good. But I'm not going to wear it because I'm giving it away. So so that was my three color cashmere cowl. Have you made one of those? I know a lot of people made those. There's like a lot of projects for that on Ravelry. I'd love to hear about it if you made one. And if you still wear it because I'm kind of um, considering now making one of those really long cowls for myself. Maybe not that pattern because I just made it. But uh, I'm sure there's more. I know there's more. On Ravelry. See you. That was fun. That was fun to get that off the needles. And it's also an UFO out of my UFO collection, which is wonderful. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to whips. I have a couple whips to share with you today. The first one is living in my Woodsy and Wild Halloween bag, which is a very favorite bag of mine. And this is the Gatsby Shawl by Don Henderson. And I am knitting it out of Moonstone Dye Works in the Merino Single Base in the Crescent Moon colorway. And you know what? This is gonna be the thing that I give away for the first quarter Patreon giveaway. Yay! <laughs> so uh, if you, oh man, I knew I was in the middle of the row. And I said to myself, I'm going to finish that row before I start recording the stupid podcast. But then I did it. So I'm just going to finish it now. Because I don't want to show it to you like that. Because I'm um, anal. So, let's see. I'm on the right side. So I'm going to do an increase here. It's a very easy shawl pattern so far. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's a triangular shawl. And it's mostly garter stitch, but then at the edges, 
Come on, buddy. There we go. There's my make one right. You got it. You got it. It has stockinette panels with bobbles in the stockinette panels. And I really fell in love with this shawl when it first came out. And it looked like it was so much fun to knit. And it's nice and... Um, it's sizable, but it's not like super huge. It's more than a one skein shawl, so I'm gonna be using two skeins, or like breaking into a second skein at least for this shawl. Um, so I really liked that size. Um, and it's just a really pretty design. And it's designed and named after The Great Gatsby, which is an F. Scott Fitzgerald book. That is really good. Um, if you have read it, awesome. It's a good book. Did you like it? I understand if you didn't like it. Uh, my, <laughs> I'm just saying stuff now because I'm knitting and I can't think while I knit. But this one time when I was very young, I uh, knew my brother-in-law before he was my brother-in-law. And uh, he wrote an article for uh, a zine that my other friend had been putting out. Like they were all in there. Teen, they were all teenagers at the time. One of them put out a zine. My brother-in-law wrote an article for it called The Not-So-Great Gatsby, which was all about how he did not like The Great Gatsby and why it was bad. I'm pretty sure since then he has reread it and he likes it now, but it's a really good book. Uh, if you're interested in like kind of hearing a really great discussion about the book, uh, John Green, who is uh, a multi- uh, what do you call it? He does a lot of things on the internet. <laughs> also, he's an author and a podcaster. Uh, he did uh, an episode in his podcast called The Anthropocene Reviewed about The Great Gatsby, and I feel like he gives, like, he talks about that book and kind of gives, like, a, a he, he, his discussion of The Great Gatsby is exactly how I feel about The Great Gatsby, but I am not good enough to put into words the way he does. So if you want to hear what I think about The Great Gatsby, uh, it's a good episode. Maybe you're interested in listening to it. Anyway, The Gatsby Shawl, which is what I am knitting on right now, and I'm almost at the end of the row. I can't believe it. I thought I was just going to knit this and then like sit here knitting and then cut all my silent knitting out. But I guess I'm leaving it in. Anyway. So uh, for my Patreon, if you um, are a member at any level for any length of time, you are entered into a quarterly drawing that I'm going to be having every quarter where I give something away. And most of the time, what I plan on doing is giving away uh, something that I make, most likely something that I've knit, but maybe, I don't know, something that I've sewn or maybe woven, something like that, um, and or some yarn. So um, for this quarter's giveaway, I'm going to be giving away this shawl that I'm making. Um, so here it is so far. So far it's just the um, triangular garter part. And I'm almost then, I think I have like, I counted last night and I've got maybe four or six more rows to knit before I start on like the actual patterning part, the edging part with the stockinette and the bobbles and stuff like that. And it's been really, really fun so far. I really love working on um, shawls like this. And it's been a while since I've knit a shawl. Um, I don't know, I just felt a little uninspired by shawls um, for a while until I saw this one. And then I was like, yep, back on board. <laughs> uh, so this is what it looks like so far. It's kind of a speckled, well, it's a speckled yarn with like grays and purples and some kind of like mossy greens here and there. Um, I really love this colorway. It's one of my favorites that I dye. So this is my first cake and I have a second skein uh, ready to go for when I'm done with this one. I've got my Tilting Planet Progress Keeper on it because it's a beautiful. And I'm using the recommended needle size, which is a US 5 on my Licka Interchangeable short tips, which I enjoy very much. I'm really excited about getting to the bobbles because I've never knit a bobble. And I'm super down with the whole bobble train. 
like bobbles are popular and they're popular because they're cool looking and I'm really excited to make one. I really want to get on that train. <laughs> so um, this is my Gatsby shawl. I love it. You should check it out if you're interested in making one for yourself or um, maybe enter to win this one. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. That was my first whip. Love it. My next whip is really exciting. It's living in this um, really beautiful Lost and Fond project bag. It is the Party Top by Abby Knits. There it is. <laughs> um, so I showed you some fiber that I had purchased from Classy Squid Fiber Arts a couple episodes ago. And since the last episode, I spun that fiber and uh, caked it up and started knitting it into a sweater. So it's Classy Squid Fiber Co. was the fiber. It's the After Dark Collection number two. And it is Coriadale, Fine Wolf Lease, Firestar Nylon, Mohair, and Sari Silk. And I had, I purchased three two ounce bats and it was like the most enjoyable spinning experience in the entire world. I, I am just like so thrilled with this hand spun. This is how it looks in the cake. Um, I got all six ounces into one skein and I'm really sad that I caked it up before I was able to show you the skein because it was a really beautiful skein, like really beautiful. But here's what it looks like all caked up. So it's mostly this really dark brown fleece with um, this like fuchsia purple, like what's that color? Um, it was the Pantone color of the year a few years ago and I love it. It's uh, it's called, jeez, oh, my knees. What's it called? Do you know what it's called? Ultraviolet, that's the color. <laughs> so it's got like these like fuchsia and ultraviolet um, sparkly bits. And I'm in love with it so hard. I loved spinning this so much. Uh, and I did a two ply. I split uh, one bat in half and then I uh, combined each half with the other bat. And so uh, I did a two ply, it was pretty uneven though. It was pretty uneven. I had like a whole entire ounce left on one bobbin after plying and so I just caked that last ounce of singles up and then continued plying the two ply um, from the outside and the inside of that cake. So it's it's pretty uneven. One ply is definitely a little thicker than the other and the ends, the two ends are definitely a little thinner overall than the middle. <laughs> but uh, you know it's okay. I weighed the skein and it actually ended up being about six and a half ounces rather than the six that like I thought I was doing because it's three two ounce bats. So that's really awesome. I ended up getting 540 yards and of course that's a little inaccurate because I counted yardage on a nitty naughty before washing it. So it's about that or maybe a little less. I'm guessing I lose a little yardage when I wash. Uh, and it was, it was such a fun spin. I spun it on my ladybug wheel, which I love. And I spun it with a short forward combo backward, sh short backward drafting technique. So it's like a, it's a worsted spun and it's really bouncy and lovely. And here's my top that I'm making. So let's see, I've got it on these really long needles right now because I was trying it on. So that's kind of nice. Cause I can show you, let me just show you like this. So this is what I have. Now the party top is a top down raglan. It's very simple. It, the shape is really similar to this sweater and it's just a top down raglan with like half sleeves. So it's like elbow length sleeves and it's like a, kind of like a crop top. And the front and the backs are stockinette. The sleeves are patterned with eyelets. It's a really, really simple lace pattern down both sleeves. And I'm knitting it on the recommended needle size USA 6. I didn't swatch, which is weird for me, but I did measure my gauge on the stockinette part that I have so far. 
I'm one stitch off from the pattern gauge, which I'm fine with. We're gonna see how it goes. Pretty much it's gonna affect um, like the length of my raglan increases. So I'm just gonna try it on. I'm knitting the uh, size 28. Now the pattern calls for DK weight yarn. And I figure this is overall a DK. I would say DK slash sport. Uh, but, so my gauge is a little off. And it's a little thinner, I think, overall. But, okay, yeah, so the pattern calls for DK weight yarn. And it calls for two to four inches of negative ease. So I'm knitting the size 28, I'm a 32 bust. So if I get to the point in my size where I'm done increasing, I'm gonna try it on. And if it's not long enough or if it's too small, I'm just gonna keep going a little bit. We'll see how it goes. It's such a simple raglan pullover pattern that I think it can be adjustable as I knit it to fit me. Um, I do have, according to my yardage count, I have more than enough yardage I need for the size that I'm knitting, but I think I'll be safe in terms of yardage um, if I need more because of the differences I have in my gauge and like if the F sizing issues or whatever. I think I'll be pretty safe, um, but if not, I'll just make the sleeve shorter. I think what I'm gonna do is just knit the body to the length that I want and then split up the remaining skein into two equal cakes and then knit the sleeves down until I run out of yarn. So I think it'll be fine. I think it's gonna work out. <laughs> uh, I did add, so this is, hold up. This is the back so far. And I just love it so much. I mean, oh, I love how the yarn is working up. I love the fabric. It's really, I know it's like going kind of weird with the camera right now, but it's a really, really dark fabric. It just looks really dark brown, almost black, with just all this awesome sparkly pink running through it. It's like my perfect fabric. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did add short row shaping to the back and the pattern doesn't call for that and it has a pretty high neckline and so I really wanted a little bit of short row shaping in the back. So I just added I think three extra rows to the back at the very top. Um, here is the front and I've got oh my other Tilting Planet Progress Keeper on here. I guess Tilting Planet is my favorite progress keepers. Um, so the front is just the stockinette, and then here's the sleeves. They have the eyelets, which, you know, aren't really going to show up that great in this yarn, but that's fine. It'll be nice and subtle. And plus, if I'm wearing it over, like, my bare skin, like, you're going to be able to see the eyelets. And I love it so much. I'm, like, so excited about this project. And... I'm kind of getting reinvigorated with spinning right now because, and I think it's because I bought this, this fiber. As I throw it everywhere. So most of my fiber stash, ever since I started spinning, has been from clubs. When I was first spinning, I joined like three different fiber clubs. I joined Spunky Eclectic for a little while, uh, Into the World for a little while, and Cloud Lover for a little while. And so I immediately built up a fiber stash that I couldn't keep up with. I ended up canceling all my clubs eventually just because I had a lot of fiber. Um, but I think for me that wasn't really the, a great way to go about it because now I just still have a lot of my old fiber stash and a lot of it I'm not that interested in. Like it's beautiful but like the color palette that I have to choose from isn't that exciting to me because they were all surprises, you know? Uh, so I find, and I, I don't like to buy fiber because I, fiber because I have so much of it, but breaking down and buying this fiber, something that actually was really exciting to me in terms of like the color palette and what it was, and then spinning it right away while I'm still excited about it, and then knitting with it right away while I'm still excited about it. It's a, kind of a totally different experience for me. Like I'm not used to that. I'm used to just like making what I have work because I have it, which is kind of why I don't love stashing things. I like kind of like getting what I want when I want it and then using it while I'm still excited about it. 
So this has been a really amazing and exciting uh, fiber and spinning and knitting experience. And I'm really excited about this top. And I should also say that um, this, I'm so, everything is so like dark, it's all running together, sorry. <laughs> this um, whole project from fiber to sweater is completely inspired by Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi because she did pretty much the same exact thing with um, the Illyrian Wings Bats from Classy Squid Fiber Co. Um, she is getting married and she wanted one of her sweaters to be um, hand knit in her hand spun. That was that hand spun. And so that fiber that she got from Classy Squid is really similar to this one in that it's a really dark wool with like um, kind of different colors of like sparkle and stuff going through it and she, I, I'm pretty sure she got three two ounce bats which is why I got three two ounce bats um, and I think hers is more like in the red family and this is you know more in the purple family and so she spun it I think she got about a DK and she found a sweater like a cropped you know sweater to knit with the yarn that she got from that and I just I just was so I thought it was so cool that I wanted to do it too so I'm doing it too <laughs> I even looked at the sweater pattern that she knit out of hers and I considered it but it's not really my style so I went with this one um, but the one that she knit is a pom-pom sweater and I can't remember the name of it but I'll put it down here it's a really cool sweater it's like um it's a cardigan with a super deep V and it just buttons at the bottom and it's cropped it's super neat but anyway yeah I'm really excited about this project I'm Think it's so cool and I cannot wait to have like this super sparkly but dark top just really simple raglan cropped pullover I'm really stoked about it I wish you could see it better my lighting is lame today there we go oh it's so pretty ah, I really like it you guys I really like it Okay, that's all my knitting. I, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, shop update stuff. I am not having a shop update uh, this time around and probably won't for a little while. Uh, I am having a trunk show for Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand-dyed yarn company, at Yarn, which is uh, my local yarn shop in Eureka, California. It is going to be on Saturday, March 14th from 11 to 4. If you happen to be in the area, I would love to see you there. Please stop by and visit me at my very first trunk show. I'm super excited about it. So I'm working really hard on dyeing a ton of yarn for that. And um, so I think the shop itself might not have any new yarn in it for a little while. Um, there is still a few skeins, like a really a few skeins in the shop right now. But um, I don't know, we'll see. I might add stuff. I'll let you know if I do but I'm working really hard at getting a bunch of yarn dyed for my very first trunk show and I'm so stoked. So um, yeah, if you happen to be around in my tiny rural town of way Northern California on uh, March 14th, hit me up. <laughs> I would love to see you there. Okay, moving on to favorites. Uh, speaking of yarn, my local yarn shop, I uh, have an acquisition that I got last time I was there. So. Uh, yarn has an exchange program where you can bring in your yarn that you don't want anymore and you'll get credit for their yarn exchange program for the other people's yarn that they bring in. Um, so a while ago, when I, like when I first found out about the program, I brought in a bunch of my stash that I knew I wasn't going to use and I got a whole bunch of credit, like $100 in credit. <laughs> and I've had that credit for a pretty long time. Um, I go to the yarn shop maybe once a month, I would say. And every time I go, I kind of peruse the yarn exchange section. And um, I I mean, there's been some really, really cool stuff there. Like there's been Countess of Blaze and like Plucky and stuff like that. But you know, I'm, I'm a discerning yarn buyer. I don't like to buy things just because it's like, ooh, pretty. Like I need, to, I need to be a little intentional about it. So I've been letting that credit sit for a while. And finally, when I went this last week to check it out, uh, I found, I found my thing <laughs> and I got a sweaters quantity of Brooklyn Tweed. Mm -hmm. So whenever they do it, they always like change out the label 
So they took off the original label and here is the yarn exchange label. But it is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and it's the Long John's colorway and this is their worsted weight one. And I got seven skeins and I still have a teeny bit of credit left over. So that's really, really exciting. I got seven skeins of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter for free, pretty much. I mean, for trading yarn. But <laughs> I'm really excited about this. I love Brooklyn Tweed. I'm knitting another sweater right now out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter for my husband Colin, which I haven't touched in a little while, but um, now I'm really excited to knit one for myself. So I've done a little Ravelry perusing and I haven't picked a pattern yet, but I'm really excited to have this. It's really beautiful. I love it. I'm really excited about it. New sweater quantity right before I go to stitches. Okay. So for the rest of my favorites, I kind of wanted to briefly go over this thing that I like to do every once in a while where I talk about um, books, music, and podcasts because there happen to be some relevant things happening right now that I wanted to share with you. Uh, so for books, I'm going to get my cheat sheet, which is my show notes. Uh, I am reading a few books. I finished a book recently and I've abandoned a couple books, so I wanted to tell you about those. Uh, I finished reading recently Children of Virtue in Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, which is the second book after Children of Blood and Bone, which I'm pretty sure is like going to be a trilogy. And it was freaking great. It's a fantasy novel about uh, a world where um, magic exists and kind of the uh, uh, representatives of magic and magic from the gods are called magi and um in the history of the world uh, magis have been oppressed magic was gotten rid of by the monarchy and uh magis have since that happened been treated horribly like really bad and so the book is kind of about this group of four young people, two of which are from the monarchy and two of which um, are brother and sister. They're both a pair of brother and sisters. Uh, the, the pair of brother and sisters that were not from the monarch monarchy, uh, the sister is, uh, uh, her, their mother was a magi and so they have magic in them. So they find each other. They, spoilers, I guess. I don't know, it's hard for me to talk about books without feeling like I'm spoiling something. They bring magic back in the first book, and uh, the second book is kind of about the aftermath. And I really loved the first book because it was kind of this like personal journey among these four teenagers and um, kind of them going through their own things to get to where they need to go, and like their goal was to bring magic back. And it was a really like, personal journey kind of book where there was, they were actually like on like a journey, <laughs> including, you know, even in addition to like their personal journey. Um, and then the second book, like I said, is all about the aftermath. Magic is back. What happens now? And it's a lot more like societal and political and like, there's a war now and, you know, kind of what their positions are within that war. And, uh, it's a little more big. It's a little more grand. Uh, I didn't enjoy the journey of it as much as the first book, but it was freaking great. It's a really great book, and I can't wait for the third book to come out, which is probably going to be a while. But um, if you're into fantasy, uh, if you're into magic and stuff like that, uh, it's really great. I think it's a YA book. It's super fun. Yes. Really great. Loved it. Um... Now I'm reading A Closed in Common Orbit, which is the second book by Becky Chambers in a series where the first book was called Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I read that book probably last year or something, and I liked it, but I didn't think it was like that great. Um, Children of Blood and Bone, I liked it, and I thought, I think it's a great book. That book, I liked it, I enjoyed it, it was fun, but I felt like it was real fluffy and I was like, eh, I don't think it's like that great, so like I'm not going to read the next one. I finally decided to read the next one, and I like it better than the first one. <laughs> uh, the world, is, so this is a sci-fi fantasy, it takes place in space, and the world of the book is like uh, pretty much 
within like the galactic commons the gc is kind of their government and it's um different solar systems and stuff like that it's a really big outer space kind of society and um it's kind of about the personal relations of the people involved in the book. Uh, the world is really interesting. I really like it. Um, some of the characters in the first book, it was a little like, I don't know, it's just a little like squeaky and fluffy and like cutesy for me. Um, this book though, it takes two of the very minor characters from the first book and follows their stories. And I really enjoy it. I'm enjoying their stories a lot more than I did the first book, um, pretty much. There's two characters that it follows, that it goes back and forth in viewpoints from. One of which is a woman who was raised, uh, well, she was genetically bred. She's a human and she was genetically engineered and bred to um, pretty much be disposable slave labor. And she escapes that as a very young child and finds an AI in a ship who takes care of her. She ends up being pretty much raised by the AI. Also, am I spoiling stuff? I don't know, I hope not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then, um, so that's her history and that's kind of one of the timelines of the book. And the other timeline of the book is that same girl as an adult um, and her taking in um, a person who is an AI who just got a body, which is illegal. Um, and so, her story now is like her trying to help this person who's newly a person kind of um, and helping try being with them while they figure out the world and so it's a really cool juxtaposition uh, I really like it it's good and I think I'm almost done with it but it's I think I'm gonna read the next book in that series after this one because I enjoyed this one so much so that's a closed and common orbit I'm also reading a book of short stories called Exhalation Stories, <laughs> and it's by Ted Chiang. And so far I'm only in the first story. It's a pretty long story, and I'm reading it really like sporadically, um, but it's really great. It's, it's the kind of fantasy where it's kind, it's like based in on this world, but there's like one element of fantasy in it, and it's that there's like a kind of a time travel machine, and it's pretty much the story of how these different people are using this time travel machine. It's really good so far, but I don't really know much about it yet because I'm still in the middle of the first story, but there's that. <laughs> um, two books that I abandoned. The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, who is the same author that wrote The Night Circus, which I really loved. I kind of, I might go back to The Starless Sea. I think I probably got maybe less than halfway through and it was fun and I loved the world it was setting up but it just felt a little pointless and rambly to me which isn't often how I feel about books because I'm not someone who really cares about there being a driving plot you know I, I'm not a plot based I don't need that in my books um, I kind of like the meandering journey of things I like world building and stuff like that uh, but something about me reading this book I just I felt like I kept asking myself like What's, what's the point of this? <laughs> so I kind of gave up on it. I lost steam, but I might go back to it. I don't know. It was fun. It was really fun. Then the next book that I abandoned is called There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole, which is another sci-fi fantasy book where it takes place in a world of, again, kind of like people who um, are endowed with powers and magic from the gods. And uh, I don't know, I, I started reading it based on a recommendation from uh, like a fantasy podcast that I listen to sometimes. And it wasn't even a recommendation, it was a commercial. They like did a commercial for the book and I was like, oh, I'm gonna read that. And I started reading it and I didn't really like it, so I abandoned it. So I'm not gonna talk much about it. <laughs> um, okay, those are books. That's what I've been up to in reading for the past few months. Uh, and now music. Uh, so I bring this up because I found out like two days ago that this musician that I really love, whose name is Ezra Furman, is going to be playing like in my town tonight. And I was so shocked 
and so excited and I'm totally gonna go see him. So uh, I thought I would let you know that that's what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> um, so it was funny because, well, first of all, nobody that I like ever comes through here. I live in a really small, really isolated college town in far Northern California. And usually how it goes with bands and musicians that I really like is that they'll play in San Francisco and then they'll play in Portland and they do not stop in between, which is right where I am, is right in the middle of those two places. So I always see that. I'm always like, oh, you suck. Because <laughs> I always try to follow up on people that I like and maybe I get to see them one day. But And so Ezra Furman, uh, I... I, I vaguely knew that they were touring, um, but I didn't even bother to look into it. And then I was crumpling up newspaper uh, for to make to build a fire in my wood stove, and I saw Ezra Furman's picture in the paper, and I was like, "Why is Ezra Furman's picture in like our local free arts and culture rag?" And so I I read it, and it turns out he's playing a show at a very small bar in Arcata on Monday night. And I was like, ah! <laughs> so I got very excited. And I'm gonna go tonight and I'm very nervous because I'm going to go by myself, which is not that weird for me. I do stuff by myself, but Colin can't go with me because somebody's gotta stay home and watch Lucy while she sleeps. So I'm gonna go by myself. But the thing that makes me nervous is that it doesn't start until 9 p.m. My bedtime is like 9.30. And no matter what, I'm gonna be waking up at least once or twice during the night. Not cause Lucy sleeps through the night, but that's just how I do. And Lucy wakes up anywhere between six and seven in the morning. So I know that I'm gonna stay out really late tonight, be really tired, and then wake up early still tomorrow morning. So I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm letting it go because I'm really excited because this never happens. Um, so if you're interested in rock and roll music, Ezra Furman makes it's pretty much rock and roll, but it's got like, what I like about it is it's got like a throwback kind of vibe. Um, the song that got me into Ezra Furman uh, is called I Wanna Be Your Girlfriend. It's so good. I will link to it in the show notes below in case you're interested in watching the video. It's amazing. It's such a good song. I love it so much. And I love Ezra Furman. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about tonight. I'm so excited. So I'll let you know how it goes, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to be so sleep deaf road tomorrow. It's going to suck. But, and it's really cool too because it's a super small venue. So there's a bar called Richard's Goat where I live. It's a really great little bar. It's really great. And they have what's called a miniplex, which is a teeny tiny room in their building. And uh, they show movies there and there's a little stage and it's tiny. And that's where Ezra Furman's playing in this teeny tiny room. So... Like, if I wasn't so, like, horrible and awkward. Like, I'm probably going to get to meet him if I want to. But I'm probably just going to be like... I'm a dork. <laughs> okay, the last thing is a YouTube channel that I wanted to share with you. Um, so, my husband, Colin, is a musician. He, uh, among other things, plays the banjo. That's kind of his main instrument. He's a bluegrass musician. He decided to start a YouTube channel uh, and put like banjo songs on it. And uh, I thought I would tell you about it because the next video he has coming out is so good and I wanted you to see it. <laughs> um, so he's got like three videos out right now and kind of his goal for this year is to do one video a month for 2020, which I think is super awesome. And he's put out a few videos already now his video for February, uh, I helped him, he's been using like my film equipment. And uh, so I helped him set up for it last weekend and he recorded it. And what I think is really exciting about it is that it's not just an instrumental banjo song that he's doing in front of the camera. He uh, played a song with our friend, another fellow musician, Lindsay Battle, who was a really great musician. And um, and there's vocals to it, so it's not just an instrumental. It's 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 a really really great song. It's called In the Pines, and they played it together out in a really cool field. The setting is fantastic. It sounds so good, and um, I'm really excited about this new video that he has coming out. And I think he's gonna publish it on Wednesday, um, which as of now is two days from now. 
So I thought I would tell you about it in case you were interested in checking out his YouTube channel. Uh, I, it's not called anything, it's just called Colin Trujillo because that's his name. And um, I'll link to it in the show notes below if you want to check it out and watch some banjo videos. Uh, but the next one, that it's not out as of right now, but it'll be out soon. And you'll see it, the, the thumbnail is of him and um, a woman playing guitar. And it's so good. I just love how it came out. I'm so like proud of this last video that he did. It's just awesome. It's awesome. So you should, if you want to, maybe watch it. And subscribe, I don't know, like it, thumbs up, subscribe to his video. Okay, that is it for the episode today. I am all through with everything I wanted to talk about, which was a lot this time. I, I'm a few days late recording this week just because of stuff, so I think I had a lot of extra stuff to talk about. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're having a really great time wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Uh, if you uh, can and want to participate in the Festimel, please do. Check out the hashtag on Instagram, Festimel2020 because I got it together. And um, the Ravelry group, check it out there. You can win some amazing prizes, which I'm sure I will tell you about next time. If you're going to Stitches West, I cannot wait to see you. It's going to be so much fun. Are you excited? Do you live locally? Are you going to drive there? Are you going to fly there? <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be fun. You're going to have fun. I'm going to have fun. We're going to have fun. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And have fun and stay awesome, because you are awesome. Okay, see ya. Bye. I'm going now. I'm, I'm done. Bye.